Hello everyone, going to play the Coronel scenario today. Um, managed to get this working now. I've played a couple more versions of the uh, C trial and did a little bit better in that. So I've improved my knowledge of the game. Um, I have tried this Coronel scenario playing the British side and uh, I found that very, I mean, the, the, historically the British lost the Battle of Coronel anyway, but um, the actual game is very difficult to play as the British um, on the Amiga in this sort of Dreadnoughts game because the British fleet starts off really um, spread out and separated and I spent such a lot, long time um, trying to get the fleet organised and in, in formation that half of the game simulated time allowed it was over. Um, so I did that twice and um, didn't get anywhere. So now I'm playing it as the Germans so I am um, Admiral Graf Spey on board the Scharnhorst which is the ship you can see here this is the bridge plot. Um, three of my ships are in sight at the moment and on the plot you can see the uh, coast of Chile off on the right hand side there to the east and uh, I'm just orientating myself basically um, working out what I want to do um, As I say, there are a couple of uh, ships missing at the moment, um, the Dresden and the Nuremberg. So I'm actually signalling them to ask them to send a position report. So I've got a rough idea where they are. Um, again, as with the sea trial scenario, you do need the map. You need to understand um, positions on the map, use the grid references from that. Um, as it happens, they're not too far away. But the reason the colour of the screen is a darker blue is that um, it, it changes colour according to the light conditions. That's looking, this is a view looking back now to the northeast, so you can see the Gneisenauer. I think it's the Leipzig behind that. Um, the coast of Chile was up there on the right hand corner. Um, yeah, the light conditions, as the light conditions change, um, the sea will get sort of darker, or and the sky as well will get darker blue or lighter blue. And I think that's four o'clock in the afternoon at the moment. Um, this is the end of 1914, I believe, December 1914, um, Southern Hemisphere. Uh, there's the there's the um, Dresden's just hove into view there, so it wasn't too far away, and and you can see the visibilities, uh, the circle has increased, which is why I can now see it. Um, yeah, I was confusing myself a bit there because if it's the southern hemisphere in the winter you would expect it to be lighter wouldn't you or am I am I um, making some kind of error here anyway um, lighting does sort of come and go with this and um, a lot of it is actually played out during the night when everything is virtually black visibility is very low it does make it more interesting and um, this game a lot more um, exciting, a lot more drama going on in this. Um, as I said, the British um, lost the Battle of Coronel. Admiral Craddock was killed. Good Hope and uh, the Monmouth were both sunk. So really, um, I've, I've got the... Uh, the favourites to win here. Um, so I've, I'm setting myself the um, 
the task of trying to do more damage than the British fleet than was actually the case historically. So we'll see how we're going. And um, I've set in some parameters here um, to patrol I think I did anyway. Wasn't actually looking at the screen then. And the um, I've ordered the Nuremberg to set course to to my ship. So wherever that ship is, out of my line of sight at the moment, it should appear at some stage, and then I can get it into formation. So yeah, I did. I think I did set a different patrol area there because I've now, I'm now heading west. Um, the Shanhorst is the ship in the centre of the circle, and the uh, the other ships are line astern and they're curving round to follow me. So for quite a period now, I just um, there's nothing for me to do other than to get to my patrol area. So I just press X quite uh, quite a lot. Have the occasional look around, make sure the ships are following me. Well, I have a rough idea from the um, from the map that comes with the game where the British ships start off from. So um, I'm just uh, heading off, patrolling that area. Oh yeah, I was going to say um, I spent so long organising the British fleet when I was trying to um, play the British that the game ran out of time before the. Two, two en the enemy fleets even got sight of one another, so they were both draws because there was no battle, so nothing to show you. Um, but in this one, things do get off to a flying start, and uh, there's a lot of action in this game that hopefully you'll enjoy. Yeah, I think what I'm I have I didn't set my own patrol parameters, but I am about to um, because I was aware from the previous games I played of this scenario that there's a risk that the uh, German and British fleets never actually meet. I think eventually uh, the penny drops and I set a new patrol area. You can see from the uh, captain's decisions down the bottom there that the Good Hope is patrolling. The Good Hope is the uh, Admiral Craddock's flagship. Yeah, so in in um, real life, the Graf Spey, Admiral Graf Spey, not the ship, the Second World War ship was named after the uh, Admiral of this German fleet here. Um, yeah, in in uh, historically, what happened was uh, Graf Spee was in command of the German. Uh, not sure whether it was called the Far East Squadron or the Pacific Squadron. It was based in Tsingtao, which was the German-held uh, colony in China. It's, you know equated with the British in Hong Kong. Um, the Japanese actually besieged Zingtao and um, Graf Spey being aware of what happened to the Russians in the Russo-Japanese War when the Japanese besieged um, Port Arthur. He, um, he is try basically trying to get his fleet home to Germany or well, the majority of it, having um, dispatched a lot of the uh, light cruisers like the Emden and so on, the Königsberg, off 
to uh, just basically perform surface raiding in the Pacific and harass the uh, Allies, but his taking the this fleet of five ships back, and uh, I'm not sure at this stage. I think he was he did anchor or harbour in Coronel um, briefly and took on coal there, um, which is how the British through their spies and naval intelligence got wind of where he was and Craddock's fleet has been very hastily put together um, it's not a match for the German fleet um, and he, he has got a rough idea now where Graf's Bay is going to be somewhere off the coast of Chile so his, his sailing north up the coast of Chile Whereas Graf's Bay, ah, and there we are, the Graf's Bay has now sighted the enemy fleet. And annoyingly, they are in much better formation and um, shape than I could organise them in when I was actually trying to play them. And the Nuremberg as well has now appeared. So all my, all my ships are there in, on the screen now, and three out of the four British ships. The only one missing is the Otranto. So I'm just uh, clicking on various ships so that the pointer points to where they are on the chart. Just to get my bearings, give you an idea. The three ships in line at the top at around roughly 10 o'clock is the British fleet. And I'm sort of steering straight towards them. Now the plan I, f I form is basically I want to hammer this ship, the Good Hope, um, sink it or disable it as swiftly as possible um, to disrupt Craddock's uh, control over the rest of his ships basically and then try and pick the rest off uh, piecemeal. So I'm going to concentrate on the Good Hope. So I'm ordering my own ship to fire at the Good Hope. Maintaining range, but I am going to go at full speed. Because I outgun, this ship outguns the British ship and at the moment it's 3,000 yards as you can see beyond our maximum range but swiftly get into uh, into range but it's best to sort of keep at a distance damage the Good Hope from a distance and then move in for the kill as he begins to uh, become crippled that's the plan anyway and I think what I do, I think it's the Nuremberg, which has only just come onto the onto the map. I do actually use one of my fleet to um, go in a lot closer and try and torpedo the Good Hope as well, so that it's got sort of an attack coming from two directions, as it were. So sort of draw the fire from from me. Just, just getting uh, my bearings. I'm asking it to look northwest at the moment. Now letting the simulation run. So we're getting closer. We're now only two thousand yards away. See the visibility is deteriorated again, and as a result, a couple of the British ships I think are no longer. Oh, maybe not. That's the Nuremberg. 
So I think this is the ship. I think I decide that because it's a lot closer there, you can see it sort of, uh, that's the cursor pointing at it there. Um, I think I decide to order that to go in for a torpedo attack. Come at the Good Hope from a different direction and hopefully draw the fire off of my flagship so that I can concentrate on just bombarding it. So that's the, this is the view from the Sharn Horse to the Good Hope. So we can have a look on the uh, after that exchange of fire. See the general uh, positions of all the ships. But now I'm going to look at the. Good Hope from the Nuremberg. So that's the Nuremberg in the foreground there. I'm signalling it from the flagship. to attack, so an attack is a torpedo run at the Good Hope. So this will give Admiral Craddock a bit of a headache. So I was watching the gunfire from the Nuremberg there, but it looked like the Good Hope took some damage. There was a sort of flash on the deck. So they're the relative positions of the Nuremberg and the Good Hope, so they are quite close to one another. This is the view north from the Scharnhorst. West from the Scharnhorst. So that's the Gneisenauer, I think, and then the uh, Leipzig behind it. Yeah, that's the Gneisenauer, which I think is the sister ship of the Scharnhorst. So they're identical ships. looking at the British.
Right, so it looked again like um, a couple of the British ships took some hits there. And more by luck than design, I've, I'm, I've got quite a nice little system worked out here in that the four German ships are sort of doing a circling action and uh, as they sort of uh, get to the nearest point to the British targets they sort of uh, fire but then pull away. So um, I found this command maintain range is quite, is quite useful um, especially if you've got a superiority in range or better guns. Here I begin to struggle because I, I couldn't remember how the Nurn, I've seen various spellings of Nuremberg. I couldn't remember how to spell it. So I, I think in the end I give up with the, <laughs> with this and go into the signal book. Yeah, it doesn't like, still doesn't like my spelling. So yeah, well, I'm. I'm going into the signal book here to see how the AI wants it spelt. So look at the Good Hope from the Nuremberg, so it's B-E-R-G, so I remember that in future. So this is the closest ship to the British. And I'm now asking for points. This is a better way of, um, so the Glasgow's have got 10 points. The Good Hope had hit, had 20 points, so I've, it's only small, you know, small uh, change at the moment. But at least I've started damaging them. Just identifying which ship is the Good Hope. Now we're going to have another run of simulation time. Right, so um, as I say, it's more by luck than design, but you could see there that uh, the Nuremberg um, was being um, attacked with torpedoes. Um, it doesn't mean its own torpedo attack run has um, been called off, but it just had to escape the British torpedoes briefly. But also it was taking the majority of the fire from the British fleet, so the bulk of my ships are, are able to shoot at the the British without them retaliating. So I'm doing the same again, looking at the Good Hope from the Nuremberg because you get a better view of the uh, the action close up. And at the moment, the Nuremberg is sailing away to escape torpedoes.
So there were definitely at least one hit on the Good Hope I saw there. And uh, things are definitely going according to plan at the moment. So there's the Nuremberg. There's the Good Hope. They're very close indeed. This is the view from the Nuremberg again, <coughs> excuse me, towards the Good Hope, which is the ship on the left, I think. Top left. I counted about seven hits on the Good Hope then, but um, there were some on the Nuremberg as well. Um, so in this program, you never actually know when, apart from your own ship, you don't know when other ships have released the torpedoes. So I decided that it was probably time to tell the Nuremberg to disengage because there was a risk that she was going to get damaged severely. Just calling out the points again now. So the Good Hope suffered 340 points, so that's a lot of damage. Uh, Nuremberg's had 20 points. So um, at the moment, Germans are winning 340 to 20. Um, you know, so it's a good start. The Good Hope's severely damaged now, so some of the guns may well be knocked out. Um, so this is where I'm telling the Nuremberg now to uh, disengage, I think, and to follow the Scharnhorst so it's going to rejoin the formation. Um, but it does take a turn for that message to get through and for the Nuremberg to acknowledge it. Um, I'm able to signal by wireless, obviously, at this stage and uh, in the meantime it will, it will continue with its previous orders which was to attack the, the Good Hope. So now I'm thinking about maybe switching over to asking the Leipzig to uh, perform the same task and uh, this is the view from the Leipzig and it's looking at the Monmouth which is the second ship in the British line and that's looking at the Good Hope now. So because the Leipzig is relatively close, 5,000 yards, that's what's going through my head to switch the uh, Leipzig over maybe.
to the Good Hope and the Monmouth are both escaping torpedoes, so that tells me that the Nuremberg must have uh, loosed tor its torpedoes at, at the Good Hope at least. Look at that, it's so close. So this is the view of the Good Hope from the Nuremberg. That's the Good Hope there where the cursor is. Three thousand yards. It's almost stabbing distance. Checking the points again. So the Good Hope's damage has gone up to three hundred and sixty points. Glasgow's suffered four points. Nuremberg ten points. So it's actually repaired ten points. Um, but I still want it to disengage. So I'm not sure if it's my imagination, but um, the Good Hope did look a little bit sort of low in the water as well, like it was flooding. And when the ships sink, you do actually get water going over the decks of of ships. So it's quite possible that that, that, that isn't just my eyes deceiving me. I still haven't sent this order for the Leipzig to uh, attack, but... Um, I think I'll do fairly soon. Visibility was uh, down a little bit as well. Historically, the visibility was very poor. I mean, the Good Hope is supposed to have exploded um, in history. And uh, looking at the Good Hope from the Dresden. Um, but no one actually saw it go down, on the British side at least. So I'm signalling the Nuremberg to follow me now, so it will uh, rejoin the formation. And then it's the Dresden, that's right, it's the Dresden that I get to take over and attack the Good Hope. So hopefully the Good Hope is um, moving very slowly now, It'll be an easy target.
Right, I remember now. That, um, I really like this aspect that um, the Dresden didn't get the signal, didn't acknowledge the signal. Um, so I also send it to the Scharnhorst, uh, not the Scharnhorst, the Leipzig. And then simultaneously both the Leipzig and the Dresden um, acknowledge the signal. So it's kind of like a, a little bit of kind of command and control problems with this game which is sort of built in. Uh, programmed in which I think is really smart um, I thought it was something like the Dresden's wireless mast had been damaged or something like that And it looks to me like the Good Hope as well is is definitely slower now because it's separating out from the other two ships. And the Otranto, you'll notice, still hasn't appeared on the scene. Again, that was, was historically uh, the case, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so now I'm asking the Leipzig to torpedo the Good Hope. So, so I'll, I'll end up with two ships closing on the Good Hope to attack with torpedoes. I'm just going to, I think this is where I just get a view from the Leipzig of the Good Hope and then we'll run another five, six minutes of simulated time. Yeah. So this is looking from my flagship again at the Good Hope. So now I think it gets uh, darker and darker. Good Hope suffered 425 points of damage, Glasgow 4, um, and nothing off of my fleet, so the Nuremberg has managed to repair the damage. It must have been a fire, something like that, that was uh, that's been repaired or put out. So now I'm asking my own captain to close range with the Good Hope, go in for the kill.
what becomes an issue is, as I say, I want to try and uh, improve on the German performance historically. So as the visibility diminishes, I need at least one of my ships to main con maintain contact with ships that are enemy ships that are outside of my own vision. Look at Good Hope. From Dresden, which is one of the attacking ships. So the Nuremberg has spotted the Otranto. So the final British ship is just joining the battle. So my ship is the one right in the centre of the screen. That's the Nuremberg where the cursor is at the moment. Um, the Scharnhorst is dead centre of the circle and heading west by the look of it. So heading towards the Good Hope. But look at those two, the Leipzig and the Dresden running parallel to, straight towards the Good Hope. Checking the points again. Good Hope has managed to repair some of its damage. So I want to try and correct that, damage it some more. Look at the Good Hope from the Leipzig. And then we're going to run another six minutes of simulated time. Leipzig spotted the Otranto as well. And the Dresden.
Well, there was a massive explosion on the Good Hope there. So, uh, repeating what happened historically. We believe the Good Hope has sunk. My watch officer is telling me. So that's the first British ship down. Three left to go. So now I'm looking at the Monmouth thinking I have to try and employ the same tactics with the Monmouth. I think I'm formulating another plan here now. Yeah, so I'm asking my own captain to point the guns at the Monmouth, fire at the Monmouth. Signal the Dresden attack the Monmouth, I'm going to say. So this is exactly the same strategy. Pausing for thought here, I think. Signal the Dresden. Oh, you see, I'd forgotten who I'd, I did this in the previous game. So I sent two signals to the Dresden to attack the Monmouth. And now I'm telling the Nuremberg, I believe. Yep. I think I want the Nuremberg to fire at the Glasgow yeah and that way they'll keep the Glasgow in sight because there's a risk that the Glasgow will get away if I lose sight of it now I'm looking at the Monmouth from Dresden Just checking the points again. So the Good Hope going down has scored 14,376 points. Glasgow's had four points of damage. And at the moment, I've repaired all the, all the German ships have repaired their damage, so the British have scored zero. So I think I had spotted my error at this point. So that is looking at the Monmouth from my flagship. It's now 9,000 yards away. And there, I think, yeah, this is where I realised that I hadn't given the Leipzig any orders, I think.
look at Monmouth from be Leipzig. Right, now it's night has fallen, so things are a lot darker. So I can no longer see the Glasgow, which is why its name doesn't appear up on the screen there. But, because of my cunning plan, the Nuremberg still can. There's the, that's the Dresden, where's the Nuremberg? There's the Nuremberg. So, yeah. It definitely works, this plan, but uh, I'm getting myself confused. No change in the score, although I thought I saw the Monmouth take a hit. But sometimes they hits don't cause damage. Signal the Leipzig. Yeah, attack attack the Monmouth. This is where I, this is where I realised my mistake, because it was still the captain's dis decisions line at the bottom still said it was trying to attack the Good Hope, which had uh, sunk. So it was working on previous orders. This is the view from the Monmouth to. Yeah, no, sorry, the view from the Leipzig, was it? I can't remember. So the Glasgow is sort of coming in and out of range of uh, vision. So I've, it's now back inside my range of vision. It's sort of circling around on the edge of view there. There it is. So I think this is the point where 
I want to find out what that ship is. It's the Dresden. So the Dresden is closest to the Glasgow. So I think signal. Yeah, I'm thinking this is the point. Oh no, signal the Nuremberg. Close with the Glasgow. Yeah. So in other words, it's going to get closer to it and keep it within view. Look at the Monmouth from Leipzig. So I think this is where I'm just getting another view of the battle. We won. Yep. Yeah. Ship to the right there was the Otranto, which is sort of attached now to the Monmouth. So now the Glasgow is out of my range of vision again. Monmouth from the Leipzig. Same view as before. Checking on the points at the moment. So I want to know if the Monmouth is being damaged. Yeah, it is. It's had 122 points worth of damage. So the gunfire is beginning to tell on the Monmouth now and my German fleet is still unscathed. Monmouth took a few hits there. The 
the Glasgow's back in line of sight. Checking the points, see how much worse the Monmouth is. 212 points. So again, the plan is working well. No points off the uh, German fleet at all. I think really there's there's not much for me to do other than let the orders play out at this point. Oh no, I am going to do something. Signal the Dresden. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm going to get to pursue the Glasgow, and that way it's going to sort of. If the Glasgow tries to withdraw, it'll be chasing it. So I'll know the Glasgow's position if, if I lose sight of it. Now I'm looking at the Monmouth from Glasgow. I can't do that. I'm typing in the wrong. Can't, can't look from an enemy ship at another enemy ship. That's giving too much of the game away. From the Leipzig, that's what I want to do. So there's the Monmouth in the centre of the top centre. So the British now are not only outgunned, they're outnumbered obviously. Um, checking on the points again. Monmouth's repaired some of its damage. So, because the Monmouth is um, outnumbered now, I'm asking my second ship in line, the Gneisenauer, to attack, not attack, but to fire at, at least, close range with the Otranto, just so that I can begin to chip away a few points off the Otranto. I'm now looking at the Glasgow from Dresden. Yeah, so the Glasgow's top third right of the screen there. Now 
I just want to look from my own flagship at the Monmouth. Run another six minutes. So from the captain's decisions line at the bottom of the screen, the Monmouth and the Tranto both trying to open range. Um, so they, that's a sign that they recognise they're in difficulty. So looking at the Monmouth from the Scharnhorst. So again the Monmouth definitely took some hits there. Look at Monmouth from Leipzig again. Checking the points. Monmouth's damage is coming down so they're repairing it. I don't think the uh, Glasgow is travelling at zero knots, I think it's just uh, when they can't make out its speed that they tell you that.
Again, the Monmouth took a lot of hits, including, I think, one to the mast, which had knocked its wireless out. So now I can see the Glasgow again, but I've lost sight of the Otranto. But I know that Gneisenau is going to be concentrating on the Otranto. Look at Monmouth from Leipzig again. Checking the points again. So Monmouth now 104 points. So I think that's down on the last time, but the Glasgow's got chipped a little bit. So visibility is diminishing and ships are slipping off the edge of my line of sight now, both friendly and enemy ones. Glasgow's repaired a tiny bit of its damage. Dresden's been damaged slightly. It's all going according to plan. I'm just picking the Nuremberg to look at the Monmouth from because it's quite close. Tranto's come back into view. There it is on the edge of my line of vision.
I think it was around this point that I began to lose track of which ships were meant to be doing what, but um, I managed to kind of gather my thoughts again. So, so I'm just wondering what that ship in the distance is, and it, uh, it turns out to be the Atranto. So I can I can see the Monmouth, which is just in front of the Atranto there, as well. Checking on the points again. Not much change by the look of it. Oh yeah, the Glasgow's taking damage. 72 points now. massive explosions on the Monmouth and so yeah we believe the Monmouth has sunk wouldn't be surprised so two down two to go now I've got to re, uh, re reissue orders So the nice now and the Nuremberg, if I remember rightly, and I did forget during the game as well, I got muddled during the game, I think they're the ones that are chasing the Glasgow. I'm asking my own captain to close range with the Otranto, so we can deal with that next. Signal the Leipzig. Close range, probably with the Atranto as well. Yep. Now I just want to check on where the Glasgow is. So look at the Glasgow from the Nuremberg. So there you are, the Nuremberg's still got vision on the, got sight on the Glasgow. Checking the points again. So I've got another 9,956 points for sinking the Monmouth. So this is the view from the Glasgow to the at the Glasgow from the Nuremberg, remember. Back looking from my flagship, the Scharnhorst. Uh, 
there's my next target, the Otranto, and that is the Leipzig, who's also going to close range with the Otranto. So meanwhile, the Dresden is out of my line of sight, and I think that is fighting the Glasgow. Points wise, Glasgow's repaired a lot of its damage, it's down to 12 points of damage now. The Dresden spotted the Otranto. So really this game is proving a useful exercise to me in um, keeping track of what's going on outside of my own sort of line of vision from my flagship. So I think it, it, they do, it, it does work really well this sort of, uh, this game as a, as a sort of simulation Despite the graphics being, you know, appalling, it's got a charm of its own and really glad to have got revived this. Uh, it's bringing back lots of happy memories of evenings spent fighting on the world's oceans. So now I'm looking at the Glasgow from the Leipzig again. And the Leipzig doesn't know where the Glasgow is. Um, that's because it's not within sight of the Leipzig. So now I'm asking to look at the Glasgow from the Nuremberg, which is one of the ships meant to be fighting it. There we are. So that I think that's the Glasgow right in the distance. So I've got another ship. Yeah, 13,000 yards away. So this ship here is probably the nice now. Oh no, it's the Dresden. It's the ship I keep forgetting about. Um, so the nice now must be the stern of which you can see on the left there. So now I'm going back to my own battle with the Otranto. So this is the view from the Gneisenauer at the Otranto. Nothing much changed in the way of damage points.
So there's a lot of the fighters are saying now uh, it's I'm, I'm having to sort of keep in my mind what's going off to the right of the screen there. So this is my view from the Shan horse at the Atranto. Twelve thousand yards. So it was hit, definitely saw at least one flash on the Atranta. Checking the points to see if damaged. Glasgow is now 122 points of damage and the Atranto 15. So both ships off screen are doing their job. I'm quite close to the Otranto now. So just checking on what's going on on the other Part of the battle, looking at the Glasgow from the Nuremberg. I think we'll follow the action from. I don't know, look at the Tranto from Schallenhorst. This is from my own flagship. Checking on the points. Glasgow's repaired some damage again, but the Atranto's on 177 points now.
torpedoes. Well, the Atranto seems to have really slowed down as well. I'm alongside it now. So I'm sure it's taken a lot of damage. Let's see. Glasgow's on 102. Atranto on 272. So that's must have finished off the Atranto at that point, the massive explosions. Watch Officer Scharnhorst, we believe the Atranto has sunk. Yep. So there's only the Glasgow left. And uh, luckily the plan has worked. Twelve thousand another over twelve thousand points for sinking the Atranto there. So I'm winning this game massively now. Yeah, luckily the plan has worked, in the, even though I don't know myself, I can't see the Glasgow and wouldn't know where it was. Um, I've got ships that are in touch with it and all I have to do now is set my course for one of those. Oh no, I make a mistake here. That's an error. This is where I begin. This, if you put in too many contradictory orders then you you really mess up your ship's ability to <laughs> behave. So I'm going to give it follow the what's that? Signal the likes of follow the Shan horse. Yeah. Uh, signal the see. This is where I've I realise my error now getting confused so I raise that and realise that I want to tell the Gneisenauer I don't want to set my course with the Gneisenauer because it's just behind me it's been a long battle <laughs> um, so I, I want to signal the Gneisenauer No, I want to signal myself, to tell myself to set course for the Nuremberg. There we go. I just have to hope I haven't confused the... And then I'm telling the Gneisenauer to follow the Scharnhorst. So I've got the Gneisenauer and the Leipzig following me and my course is for the Nuremberg which is within sight of the Glasgow. So while I leave the captains to worry about that contradictory order, this is the view of the last bit of the battle.
So I'm heading southeast at the moment, but I think that's just because the ship is sort of turning. I think I need to be going more towards the east than the southeast to get into the final part of the battle. So now this is the view of the Glasgow from the Dresden. Let's check and see if Glasgow's taken any more damage. No, it hasn't. 109 points. Just got in sight of the Nuremberg, but um, the Glasgow looked like it had uh, exploded there. It's sinking or sunk, yeah, 4,800 points. So I'm winning 41,260 points to me, and the British have scored four. So that's the Dresden, which was the ship that was really close to the Glasgow. And I am now in view of the, the Dresden as well. So um, I've completely wiped out the British fleet. And uh, I'm not sure whether the game actually ends after a couple of turns. Or um, it will come to an end, you know, at a specific time. But I'm just sort of running it now to see. I don't want to quit or retire at this point. Um, you know, in case it thinks I'm surrendering or something. So I'm just letting it run for a few turns. Now I'm considering um, sailing into Coronel, which is what the Germans did. It's a sort of friendly port, te technically neutral in Chile, but um, so I'm setting my course for Coronel and uh, heading off to re refuel and repair. Recall.
my thinking was if the game didn't end of its own right I'd get to see a bit of uh, land or something like that so all I'm literally doing is just pressing X letting another six minutes time and there we are the battle is over are you ready for the results yes Good Hope 14,376 points, Monmouth 9,956, Glasgow 4,800, Otranto 12,128, Dresden suffered four points worth of damage. Battle should be considered a complete victory for Admiral von Spey and the German fleet. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed playing Dreadnoughts. So that's the end of the game. Um, hope you enjoyed it. The uh, I certainly am enjoying this. Um, I'm, I'm having a bit of technical difficulties with um, the the disc which has got uh, the Second World War uh, battles on it. Um, but I'm sort of working on that. I, I've managed to refight the Battle of the River Plate, but for some reason the sound effects were missing. Um, as far as I can remember, it did have sound effects on it, so I'm trying to find a solution to that at the moment. But um, once I've sorted that out, I'll put a battle report up for um, something, uh, something like the... Battle of the Denmark Straits or the Battle of the River Plate or something like that. So we'll have a Second World War battle. Okay, that's it. Thanks very much for watching and see you on the next video. Bye for now.